From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Hello and welcome. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. It's Friday, October 13. Let's get things started. It is already the highest density population anywhere in the world. People are saying Israel is revenge. No, 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 no. It's not revenge. Israel ordering an evacuation of part of Gaza in its attack against Hamas. As Palestinians fear, it's not enough time. We are currently getting our resources together. Security is on high alert here in the U.S. after Hamas calls for worldwide protests today. We're back to square one. The fight for the gavel just blew wide open again. Republican Congressman Steve Scalise drops out of the race to become Speaker of the House. During the entire month of October, we are packed. A big business boost in Half Moon Bay. The Art and Pumpkin Festival makes its return. People have described it as, as a golden ring in the sky. Still have your eclipse glasses hanging around? Get ready, a solar spectacle is happening this weekend. Good morning to all of you. Not only is it Friday, but it is Friday the 13th, and so we are a little superstitious here on the set. I'm Nicole Zalimus. I grew up that way, though. My mom, anytime we'd be driving and a black cat would dart across, we would turn around. Really? Even if it was like a three-mile detour, we would turn around. She was that serious? Yes. Wow. I, I, you know, I, my grandma was a little bit like that. My mom, not so much, but three-mile detour. I mean, it, it was not an option to go through that path. But now, as a mom, I'm like, <laughs> like <laughs> Sorry. We got to get places, people. <laughs> yes, we do. I'm Gianna Franco. Good morning. We do have to get places, and maybe you're getting out about this weekend because it is Friday, so hopefully you got some fun plans. We've got a lot going on, Jessica, so how's that forecast going to look? You know, it is Friday, but it's Friday the 13th, so just stay inside. Don't step <laughs> on any cracks. Don't break anyone's backs. Just chill, relax. Heading into this afternoon, that kind of just rhymed. I feel like Dr. Seuss this morning. As we wake up this morning throughout the Santa Clara Valley, we are waking up to some clear skies and 50s in the forecast, very similar to yesterday. But but what's different from today and yesterday's forecast is the fact that we actually have some rain right around the corner. It won't necessarily impact the South Bay. Forget about that. You guys will just see some cloudy skies. But as we head a little bit more north into areas like Nevada, Petaluma, all the way up into Santa Rosa right behind me, where we're currently sitting mostly in the upper 40s, nice and cool. We're actually going to see some showers in the forecast for us right around the corner. Actually, I want to time that out right now so you could just see what I'm talking about because it's not that intimidating of a system by any means. Remember earlier this week, Monday, Tuesday, when we saw those quick frontal systems kind of sweep their way through. They brought in a lot of clouds for most of the Bay Area, but then they also brought in a light little bit of showers. That's what we're going to be seeing late tonight, early tomorrow morning. But it starts to break apart by the time it even makes landfall, too. So if anything, areas like Santa Rosa will see it more along the coast near Bodega Bay, a very similar trend. But the more south we go into San Francisco, even just across the Golden Gate Bridge, we're really just getting those clouds that are going to linger around into our forecast tomorrow morning. I'll bring up the reason why I'm kind of bummed about that in just a second. For in, our total rain amount that we're going to see within the next 24 hours or so. It's really just about a hundredth of an inch anywhere from Bodega, Bodega Bay up into Santa Rosa. So keep that in mind. Here's the reason why I'm kind of bummed out, though. We've been talking so much about the solar eclipse and how exciting it's going to be. It's about 83 percent. So you'll see that ring of fire. But sadly, we won't see it because we're going to be dealing with clouds widespread throughout the Bay Area as that system really settles its way in. So cloudy skies tomorrow, just in time for the Art and Pumpkin Festival happening at Half Moon Bay. We're going to continue to see these 60s last into our Sunday forecast too. A little bit more sunshine on Sunday, though. We'll have more on that and why that's happening for now. Over to you, G. All right, Jessica, thank you. Let's talk about those freeways right now. We're going to start with a live look at the Nimitz 880 here. You can see some flashing lights there off to the side, causing just some slight delays as you approach that area. Other than that, it's pretty quiet along 880. It is Friday, less cars on the roadway anyway, but definitely give yourself a few extra minutes just as you travel through there just to play it safe. San Mateo Bridge looking good. No delays right now. Westbound heading over towards 101. Keep in mind, though, it's going to be busy on 92. Once you're headed towards Half Moon Bay this weekend for the uh, Pumpkin Festival, Highway 1 will be quite busy as well. So traffic gets congested. Definitely uh, leave early for that one and you'll get stuck in a little bit of traffic for sure. Now to the conflict in Israel and Gaza. The U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is meeting today with Israel's Minister of Defense. Austin also plans to meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and with members of the Israeli War Cabinet. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken just left Jordan on his way to Qatar. Short time ago, Blinken met with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and Jordan's King Abdullah. They reportedly talked about efforts to secure the release of hostages and about the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. 
Israel is warning the United Nations to evacuate more than one million people from northern Gaza to the south. That is half of the region's population. Israeli tanks are in position along the Gaza border, and a ground incursion may be imminent. More than 1,500 Palestinians have already been killed and hundreds of thousands displaced by airstrikes. U.N. officials say a large-scale evacuation is likely an impossible task. We asked a professor of Middle Eastern studies at UC Berkeley, and he drew this analogy to the Bay Area. Behind me are the pictures of San Francisco. San Francisco is approximately 600 plus 700,000. Double that number of population. Talk about that the bridges are not there because they have been uh, made inoperable. Uh, All the streets, uh, market streets, all the major streets, all the major apartment buildings have been destroyed. There is no water. And it is already the highest density population anywhere in the world. And then you ask people to leave and they have 24 hours to make their way out. I cannot foresee the possibility of actually movement of such people, which means that Israel is really looking and staring at a massive casualty, civilian casualty. The AP reports that Hamas is calling on Palestinians in northern Gaza to stay put in their homes. Since the attacks by Hamas last weekend, Israel has imposed a complete blockade on Gaza. That means no food, water, gas or medicine is being allowed in. Right now, charter flights arranged by the U.S. government are taking Americans out of Israel. The State Department says at least 20,000 U.S. citizens have reached out since the Hamas attacks. The flights from Israel are going to Athens, Greece and Frankfurt, Germany. There is also an option by sea with ships carrying evacuees to the country of Cyprus. Well, here in the U.S., Jewish communities are feeling anxious. Law enforcement agencies across the country are stepping up patrols at Jewish-owned businesses, houses of worship, and diplomatic buildings. This comes as a former Hamas chief is calling for protests and for people across the world to deliver a message of anger today. California's Homeland Security Advisor says they are aware of statements about potential threats, but as of now, there are no credible or specific threats to our state. Jewish communities in the Bay Area are looking inward at their own faith amid shocking violence and incredible grief. More than 1,200 people have been killed in Israel since this conflict began. The victims include children and babies. And as Andrea Nakano reports, an Oakland synagogue is trying to provide a counterweight to the violence. Rob David Lepkowski leads the Shabbat Oakland congregation. Members have been coming by to light the Shabbat candle as they prepare for a period of rest dedicated to God. Coming together has been one way to cope with the war. We've gone through a hard week ever since we heard the news last um, Saturday morning. Um, As soon as it happened. Uh, We had people coming here with people crying. It was during the holiday. It was very difficult. While the grief has been overwhelming, Rob Lepkowski is urging his congregation to follow the teachings of the Jewish religion. If if evil can do so much, can make such a huge effect on people, Mm -hmm. then good can do even more. Rob Lepkowski explains it's more important now than ever to bring positivity into the world. Jewish response is always to double down in, you know, acts of goodness and kindness in doing mitzvot, doing um, Jewish good deeds, um, you know, laying the tefillin, lighting the Shabbat candles. By doing, by doing mitzvot and by bringing more light into this world, that's what we can do to spiritually fight that, that darkness. Shabbat Oakland is expecting a larger than usual turnout despite Hamas declaring a day of jihad on Friday. We reached out to several local law enforcement agencies and they say they haven't received a specific threat in the Bay Area. We're proud of who we are and I think when something like this happens, more people come out. People don't go to synagogue regularly. They're looking for a sense of community. They want to be with other Jews and they want to show that this won't deter us. So we're going to fight back. While Rob Lukowski appreciates the show of solidarity by many in the community to denounce the attacks by Hamas, he encourages everyone to support Israel by spreading kindness, that no one should have to suffer the way they did in southern Israel. The message to people is that um, think for a second that this would be your child being butchered. Think for a moment that, you know, you're just walking out of your house or trying to sleep in your bed. And just we're all human beings and we're all born with, with uh, you know, peace of God in us. 
Habad Oakland has notified the city's police department about today's events and will have security on hand. Nicole. The U.S. has faced threats before, like the ones now being made. So what is law enforcement doing about it? We asked a retired FBI special agent in charge who told us this is mostly business as usual for the FBI. When I was a terrorism supervisor, we part of our specific responsibility was Hamas. And any time that there was an, an elevated threat for attacks that Hamas would have coordinated, we certainly paid very close attention to all of our investigations that had anything to do with that sort of profile. It doesn't mean that they're not looking at those, generally speaking, every day anyway, but certainly it gets a more critical eye during this heightened period of awareness. The difference, Jeff Harp said, is communication between the feds and local law enforcement so that if there is a credible threat, everyone is ready to respond. If you think about state and local law enforcement agencies, they don't really per se investigate terrorism or Hamas related activities. That's an FBI uh, law enforcement activity on the counterterrorism squads. But they are sharing information across the board. There's no doubt in my mind. In Washington, D.C., Capitol Police will be out in full force today. There are no known threats against the Capitol, but police are not taking any chances. They've put up fences for extra security. We will continue to follow the latest developments out of the Middle East on air, streaming on CBS News Bay Area and online at KPIX.com.